right of your paper, let's write the date. What is the date today, people? 27th. 8 what? 27th. 8 27 13. Is it fun as in hard? Uh, I wouldn't say it's hard. It, the only thing that makes it hard is we have to, uh, you're going to feel like a little bit like you're in uh, English class today. There'll be a lot of writing, so that makes it a little longer. But as far as just being incredibly difficult mathematically, no, it's not. Okay? What we're going to talk about are statements you've probably heard all your life, just didn't know what they were called. 1.4. It's called a conditional statement and their converse. And no, we're not talking about the shoe. Aha. Uh -huh. Funny, funny. Uh -huh. Very good. Now. say a conditional statement is? Can somebody read to me what you think I ought to put down here? Um. <laughs> Good. It is an if-then statement. The symbolic version, or symbolic version of an if-then statement. This is going to look really weird. Looks something like this. What that means is if P then thing we definitely need to do is write down an example of an if-then statement. So our first example, I'm going to say, <coughs> oh, if it is a dog, First of all, would you say that is true or false? False. <laughs> if it is false, give me about a little bit before, but a counterexample. So first of all, I would agree that that is a false statement. Now, since it is false, I want you to prove it to me by giving me a counterexample. What do you think counterexample would be? Yes? Um, like, whenever you, never mind, I can't explain it. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with explaining it incorrectly or, you know. Well, like, not all dogs have right. brown hair. Right. Like, some black labs, have, they have black hair, apparently. Black lab, yeah. Yeah. She's, believe it or not, she's right. A perfect counterexample would be... <gasps> 
flat. That's an example of a counterexample. Now, what is a counterexample? It's an example of it being wrong. An example that says that, no, nah, how many times have your friend said something, you said, uh-uh, and then you, yeah, and then you pointed out the reason why, uh-uh. Well, if so-and-so does this and that doesn't work, that was a counterexample. That was an example of it not working. Now, one thing that people, people think they need to say all the things that don't work. No, you just need to give one example. And it's a counterexample and says that doesn't work. So this isn't the only right answer. Can anyone think of another one? Dalmatian. Very good. Dalmatian. Dalmatian, don't, they don't have uh, brown fur, do they? Here's counterexamples. What about an example? Give me an example of when it works. Huh? They're brown poodles. A brown shizu. Chocolate lab. Chocolate lab. That's yeah. probably the easiest one to write. I don't have to spell shit soon. <laughs> <laughs> probably won't be much better with chocolate. But I'm a math teacher, not okay. English. Now, that's an example. These are what? Counterexamples. You guys see the difference? Understand. Okay? For some reason, that tends to be one of the hardest things that people have problems with. Or one of the things people have the most problems. Another example, and then we're going to talk about how we label this and where I got the P and the Q from. If it rains, then I bring. It's actually number one on your worksheet, but that's okay. Now, what I want to do is label this. What you have, you have something called your hypothesis. And then you have another part which is called your conclusion. How many have ever heard the word hypothesis before? What does it mean? Educated guess. An educated guess, yeah. It, it, or you, you have an idea. A hypothesis is an idea, isn't it? Yeah. Or, or a start. Which one do you think is the hypothesis? The start. What has to happen first? It has to what? It rains. Your hypothesis in this case is it rains. What do you think your conclusion is? What happens as a result of it raining? Then what? Bring bring my umbrella. Umbrella. I bring my umbrella. That is your conclusion. It's not so bad, is it? So you see what I mean? It's not that hard. It's just maybe some new terms, a lot of writing. When you do your homework, I'll be okay with you boxing and writing H above that when you write the problem and boxing that in and writing what? C above that for conclusion. I have another question. In this case, remember when I said P then Q is the symbolic form of an if-then statement? Mm -hmm. What is P here and what is Q? He is We'll look back up here. If P, then what? Then is Q. So in this case, what is P? The problem. It rains. It rains. Isn't that the first part? What is Q? The I bring, I bring my umbrella. Well, we've learned about that, right? Mm -hmm. We've got that up there. Next thing I want to talk about is something called, <coughs> hold on, let me get this away so it can lay flat. Something called.
something called the converse. The converse of a conditional statement is This right here, P then Q, is your conditional statement. Okay? That's your conditional right here. Everybody got that? Your converse is that. What would the converse be here? I want to know, see if you guys can... Look at that and figure out what the converse of that statement up there would be. With this definition as the converse. And one thing in math, keep it simple. You're probably saying, oh, it can't be that easy. It sounds complicated. Um. Guys, by what I wrote right here and right here, you ought to be able to write it down. That's my P, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That's my Q. What did I say converse was? Oh, I bring my umbrella. You bring your Q to the what? Front, and you put your P in the what? Back. So your statement is if, and it's not if it rains, if it, if what? I bring my umbrella. I bring my umbrella, comma, then, What's happened? It rains. It rains. And you'll find lots of times that your, lots of times when your conditional is true, your your converse will not be true necessarily all the time. And but we're not worried as much about true as much as knowing the difference between the two. Okay, mm -hmm. being able to what? Flip them. That's not so bad, is it? The reason we have this is because there's actually a thing called the uh, inverse and contrapositive. And it's not P then not Q, not Q then not P. We won't get into that right now, but Jesus. It's, it's easy. This, sim this symbolism here is basically so it can be very easily, you can see the difference between the conditional and the converse. It makes it, it generalizes it. Okay, whatever was in front, we put in what? Back. Whatever was in back, we put in what? Rick. That's the converse. Now, one thing to be careful with, we still want to have some remnants of the English language working right here. You're going to find that you might have to reword things. And when you do that, don't change what it says. Like if you wrote, if I decide to bring my umbrella, is that what that said? No. No, it didn't say if you decided to, it said if I what? Bring my umbrella. So don't try to change it to make it true. Just because it doesn't make any sense as far as in logic doesn't mean that you've written the wrong one down. It needs to make sense grammatically, in other words, English-wise. You don't need, I need not bring my, you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't need, it needs to make sense in grammar-wise, but it, you know, that doesn't mean that it'll necessarily make sense logically. The statement you said, it could be a very false statement. Because, I mean, as wrong as this state, as false as this statement was, what would the converse be? If what? If has brown hair and then it what? Then it rains. And that's even funnier than the other one, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. guess what? If that's true, then what am I? Dollar. Because <laughs> oh. I got some brown hair, right? You see the point I'm making? I mean, that's a pretty ridiculous statement. But that doesn't mean that you were wrong when they said, what's the converse of this? If it has brown hair, then it is a dog. Yeah, that's the correct answer. It's just a stupid, pretty dumb statement, huh? Mm -hmm. But that is the converse. Does that make sense? And that's what we're trying to get to, a little bit of logic here and understanding the difference, okay? Uh, let's get that uh, worksheet out. If it rains, then I bring my umbrella. They want us to what? Identify the hypothesis and conclusion. So if you were writing the problem showing all steps and work, you would write that out word for word, neatly. You would write a what? 
H above that, and then you would box that in and write A what? C above that. Don't box in the then. And then you would make a space on your paper, because there's nothing wrong with making it legible and having a space in between problems. I would appreciate it if we did that on all our assignments. Then you would write that down. What is my hypothesis here? If what? It is Saturday. That's my hypothesis. What is the conclusion? Correct. Now, and here's another thing. It's not necessarily first and second. It's the condition or the hypothesis that happens and then what happens as a result. So if you look at number three, let's look at it a little closer. Think to yourself, what has to happen first? In logic, not necessarily in the sentence. But what has to happen first for the other to happen? I will go swimming if it is hot. The condition is that it is what? So this is actually our what? Hypothesis, isn't it? What is our conclusion? I will go swimming tomorrow. See the difference there? Like I said, this section is all about logic, about be able to read the sentence and understand what they're actually saying first, even though from left to right it may not be first. If you were to rewrite that as an if-then statement, how would you write it? If it is hot, what? Then I will go swimming tomorrow. Can anybody see a way I could probably do a little better? I think you take that as an answer. Can anybody see anything in that statement that might be a little wrong? Yes. Huh? <laughs> no. I mean, honestly, look at that. <laughs> the conclusion deals with what day? Tomorrow. 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 Does the this deal with really a day? No. But when you read it the other way, you're kind of assuming that he's talking about it being hot what? Tomorrow. So what we should probably say is if it is hot what? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Then I will go swimming tomorrow. Now, are you getting the idea if you don't put the tomorrow? Yes. But probably the most correct answer is that. So sometimes you can add things if you think in the statement that it's saying that. Does that make sense? Yeah. But like I said, the first is okay too. If it is a birthday party, I will buy a gift. They tried to trick you here by not putting what? Then. Then. But the if is still our hypo hypothesis, is it not? Mm -hmm. I will buy a gift is your what? Conclusion. Mm -hmm. If I draw a state straight line, I will need a ruler. Anything change here? Mm -hmm. I will. If I draw a straight line from my hypothesis, I will need to ruin my conclusion. I will do better at my piano recital if I practice each day. Which one has to ha is, is your condition? Practice every day. Practicing every day. As a result, what happens? I will do better at my piano recital. So that's actually your what? Conclusion, isn't it? Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. People tend to have problems with this next part because it requires to be a little bit creative. <coughs> like I said, you're not going to have a lot of problems, but I expect you to write this problem down. And then write the two, your two other ways to write it down afterwards. So we're going to need to write two statements after this. So if you're doing this problem, you would write the problem, you'd write that down, and then you'd write your two reasons. Write two other forms of the statement. If you floss regularly, your gums are healthier. Your gums are healthier if you floss regularly. Your gums are healthier.
if you floss regularly. Okay, that's one. Very good. And understand, I'll give you an example. How about this? Flossing regularly makes your gums what? Healthier. Did I kind of write the same thing, just in a little bit different words? Mm -hmm. That's all they want. Are you still kind of have a, con a condition or a hypothesis and a conclusion? Mm -hmm. Do you still have something that happens and then as a result, the conclusion that happens? Yeah. And it says the same thing, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We are in the state finals if we win the tournament. So my first one is I could just change this to a good old-fashioned if-then statement, right? If mm -hmm. what? If, if we win tomorrow. If we win tomorrow. Then we are in the state tournament. Guess I better zoom out a little huh? Can anybody think of another way to say that? think of a way of shortening. How about winning tomorrow puts us in the state tournament? Does that say the same thing? Yeah. What's the condition? Winning tomorrow. What's the result? Puts us in the state tournament. skip down to number 10. They want us to write the converse of each statement. They are parallel lines if two lines never cross. So if, and then what needs to happen? My conclusion needs to become my what? Hypothesis. So if, here's what I should say. Two lines are parallel. Why do you think I say that? Usually you state the thing before you say they or he or that, right? So I'm saying if two lines are parallel, then they what? Never cross. Never cross. You see how grammatically I kind of changed that? Because I stated what I was talking about. Really, when if you look at this, aren't two lines and they saying the same thing? Yeah. So instead of putting they in front, which grammatically probably isn't the right thing to do, I said still said if two lines. Really, the main thing was is our parallel lines and what? Never cross. That's what needed to change. Agree? Two lines are parallel, then they never cross. Let's look at this. Sometimes to write the converse, I'm going to leave a space over here for the converse. It might be important that you write it as an if-then statement so it's easier to flip. Rewrite this as an if-then statement. So we're going to write our conditional right here, which is our first one. Rewrite as an if-then statement. If what? If the number is zero. What, what's the condition? Well, what happens first? Put the uh, phone up. Divided by two. If, what is
does it have to be first? Even. even. And even what? Number. So if, so how can I say if, how do I say that right? It, if, I don't know, a number, a number is, divisible is by two. even, then what? It is divisible by what? Two. Now does it seem easier to make this into a converse? Mm -hmm. To flip it? If what? A number is divisible by two, by two the <coughs> then the number is what? Even. Very important that you write this down. I would say it's very important that you have something to refer to because as easy as this sounds when I talk about it up here, it makes sense to you more probably after I say it than it does before. So make sure you have something to refer to, a template, which this worksheet is, that's why it's notes. That's why I don't want it turned in. It's a template for when you start doing your work, then you do one like that on the worksheet, right? You see how I did it and it may lead you in the right direction. It's probably the same thing, just different Talking about dogs and leashes or something instead of uh, a number being even and a number being divisible by two. But it's the same concept, okay? And that's what we run into problems with.